Well, yeah, and totally. I mean, you got to meet some of the actors. Yes, yeah. Actors. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm throwing that word around. Um, <laughs> some of the psychos that uh, participate in the torture fest at McCamey Manor. Um, what were those people like? Well, look, when you meet the kids that were working there, the teenagers. What the fuck? They were like, they were the sweetest kids. Those kids are really sweet. They were really nice. Like, um, this kid, Freddie, who's in there, and he said, it's one of my favorite lines that he said was, um, whenever I get home from school and after I finish my homework, then I wonder, I wonder what I'm going to do at McCamey Manor this weekend. And I was like, oh, my God, this kid is so good that even in his imagination, after he comes home from school and finishes his homework, that's when he starts thinking about what he might be doing to people at McCamey Manor. This is such a good kid. I mean, in a real sweetheart, and I'm having such a different feeling right now. <laughs> sure, but like, here's the thing: is like he's, you know, those were really good kids, and honestly, kids are, kids are, people pleasers, and if they look up to somebody, and that person they look up to is inspiring them to do good things, they're gonna really do good things. We've all had a teacher that inspired you to do some, do something totally. better than you've ever done before. Yeah. You know, and they were really inspired by Russ. And what is Russ inspiring them to do? To go crazier. Now, if you're a kid and you're already used to playing and kids play rough, that's just what they already do. Yeah. And if somebody is encouraging you to go crazier and harder and use duct tape and do well, they're just, they're trying to put on the show that Russ wants. And they got carried away. Kids get carried away. That's why they're kids. And you shouldn't have adults go through an extreme haunt experience that's a bunch of kids wearing masks that are teenagers that are being encouraged to do crazy shit. They, then guess what? Then they will cross a line because they think, well, I really want to impress them this time. This time I'm going to shove someone's face in dog shit and so that's what those kids were doing to try to be really impressive remember the only reason he stopped having kids work there is when he found out that one of the adults who was working there was a pedophile he says it in the movie awesome. yeah i don't you know, want to well, like, he didn't word it quite like that he tried to make he it sound said, a lot more eloquent <laughs> he said that there's a guy was working here, turns out he was getting the underage um, employees, uh, he was giving them drugs, he was giving them alcohol. I believe he said pedophile in that interview. And I mean, he made it really clear he did something to an underage kid and they had to get rid of him. So they got rid of the underage kids and they got rid of the questionable guy, the guy who was doing all the bad things and uh, obviously Russ wasn't supervising enough if someone's giving kids drugs and alcohol and crossing a line with them is this is illegal this is horrific if you're going to have adult supervision you have to actually provide the supervision but what does he do to fix things he replaces the kids and replaces that guy with former uh, neo-nazis that were in prison for uh, assault and that's what he says in the, Fuck. and I'm sitting in the, uh, yeah, it's in the movie. He says it to the I camera. I watched the movie, but that's not like ringing a bell. Don't worry about it, dude. It, people sometimes the second time they see the movie start realizing, oh, he looked right at the camera and he says that clearly. He says it in the car. I'm in the car with him. The camera's right on him. Like when he's talking about the guy messing around with the kids and doing terrible things, there's a spotlight on him. I wanted him to know I'm, I'm filming you. He's talking to me and he's, admitting this stuff that he'd never told anybody. It was just, I was like in shock that this was happening. In the car, he then tells me, yeah, we got a couple of, not all of these people. Look, there was, there were definitely a couple of really, really nice people that were working there too. There were some definitely nice people there. However, he's like, there's a couple of these really rough guys who, um, yeah, they went to, went to prison for assault for beating up a cop. He beat up a cop 
and um, I'm gonna do the background check. It should turn out just fine. Should should be all right. And he's like, he was he was in prison for like he was like a skinhead, and it's like, so he's a skinhead who beat up a cop who went to jail for assault, and now he's working at your extreme haunt with Torture no safe mansion. Work. <laughs> I had that on tape, and I was like, there it is. He is saying it right there. People make all kinds of speculations about McCain Manor, and they were getting really upset about things that never happened. And they were getting upset about things that he was pretending happened. There. Oh, like like he, pretending to drug people, right? He loved that. He loved that. He's like, they all believe it. Like he's the most anti-drug guy ever. Okay, like, he's so just, he's <laughs> he's not drugging drugging anybody. No, he's not no, actually like, sticking it, drills up people's nose or pulling their fingernails off. No, no, the drill was. Um, the whole drill head thing was all a um, bunch of duct tape stuff, and if it it was dull, there was nothing sharp about it. it but but it wouldn't like that hurt still going up your nose and spinning? Look, I don't think it felt good. You know? <laughs> I guess that's their point, though, to hurt you, right? But just like, but yeah. So are they doing just enough to where it's like still legal somehow? Look. How is it legal? I don't, I get it. Look, I don't know it's legal. The second somebody says, I want to go, and you don't let them go, you've crossed the line. That, that, can't, that can't be legal. How is he be. not in jail for like, nobody has sued him. And stuff? Nobody has sued him. Why? Nope. The NDA? The, okay. The, the no, because the NDA, it's like a waiver is a piece of paper you take to court when you sue somebody. Uh -huh. I mean, like, what, what, what's, what piece of paper says, here, you can torture me now. It's like, you know, I mean, other than George W. Bush coming up with the torture memo, saying that it's okay for us to torture people, other than our government doing that, I don't think it's, um, it's just, I mean, look, it's not legal to torture people. So I believe, this is just my perspective on it. I think people are afraid to, um, to go after him. Because I think what they're thinking is, what's the other lawyer going to do? What's his lawyer going to do? They're going to show videos of even worse things happening to other people. And they're going to say, did Russ make you watch these videos first? Yes. Then they're going to have the recorded Skype interviews of Russ telling them, I'm going to make you eat your own vomit. I'm going to do this. I'm, he tells you everything he's going to do. You don't want to do you. this. Yeah, yeah, he says, I, you don't want to do this. It's real. It's worse than you can imagine. I'm going to ruin your life. Like, he just tells people this shit. Yeah. Then it's the interview before. Then he films him signing the waiver, and he keeps telling them all. And the waiver says, I'm, you're going to be stabbed. You're going to be choked. We're going to beat your face. You're going to have bruises all over your body. The, the waiver looks like you're about, you're, we're going to murder you. They can <laughs> obviously say, well, I thought that was part of the show. I thought that was fake. And it is part of the show, because they don't stab you. So that is a bunch of true stuff mixed in with bullshit in order to get you scared. I have a feeling that the people who've been victimized are afraid. This is my opinion. That they might be afraid that if the videos come out, they're going to, in a court room, that they're going to be judged for what they participated in why would you want to do this what the fuck is and wrong with you <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. which i wanted to make really clear that's why i want to spend a lot of time asking people why they're doing these things and talking to people about about it because i don't want to stigmatize anybody that wants to do something this extreme you know there's right there's a whole lot of communities in the world that just because you're not into it doesn't mean it's not normal for somebody else. So I'm definitely not trying to stigmatize anyone that would want to face their worst fears in, in a crazy situation. And I'm, I'm different than a lot of people in society. And I really go out of my way not to judge people. <laughs> I try my best to really get to know them first. And so I'm sure if you're going to go to court, though, I'm sure that was in their mind. And, and that's terrible. And um, like one thing I'm glad about is thousands of people, thousands of emails um, from people and calls and people in person telling me, I took myself off 
the McKay Manor list after I saw your movie. I like oh, I was on the list. Good. I took myself off of it, and oh. I was like really relieved. I'm like, well, that's fantastic. You're always going to meet someone who's like, well, now I really want to do it. I'm like, okay, great. I, right. I, whatever, dude. I could show you anything, and that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. But the majority of people who've seen my movie definitely that were thinking about doing it before took themselves off the list. One thing I'm also really proud of is a lot of haunts, a lot of horror attractions show my movie to their workers before haunt season to show them the right way and the wrong way to scare people. Oh, that's like that's amazing. what Shar is there and she's very clear and she does a really good job of explaining the the right way of scaring people. Like, you know, in McKamey Manor, like, like he he's crossed so many lines, you know, and I, I know I really wanted to show him as the person he is so that you understood him as the full picture. You well, know? his daughter said, I saw an interview with her. Yeah. He said that she has panic disorder. She said that he put her in the haunt at one point to teach her that it's about mind over matter. Did you hear anything about that? That's his no. whole thing, mind over matter? No, I no, I've never heard him say mind over manner. I've heard him say a lot of other things over and over again. It's just a game. It's just yeah. a show. Do you think there's yeah. any chance that he's selling like more some of the gnarlier footage, like streaming it to Thailand or selling it on the black no. web or anything? Okay. Like that. No, no, definitely not. Because he's putting it. It's on. It's on YouTube. He's putting the he's stuff putting out there. He's putting some of the his... worst stuff on YouTube. He's not like he's like showing on YouTube most of what's really going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it's like there's like a there are a few things here and look, there's a lot of stuff they don't show, but like I saw what one of the videos he posted to YouTube for someone going through was six hours. And it wasn't a best of, it was that one person going through. The, and when the people go six hours that on YouTube. Yes. Yes, there's four hour videos. There's two look two hours is a long time to watch right. someone going through this stuff. There's definitely stuff that they left out for sure. You know, I I'm filming those shots where you see what he's doing and what they're doing. Like when he had that cage, that the pool with the cage and the water, and you actually see what they're doing. In his videos, it's so close to their face, you can't see that it's like someone shoving someone's face underwater and that there's the bars on top and how yeah. it works. It's hard to tell. And I wanted you to see, like, this is exactly what's going on in that shot. And when you see a clear picture of what's going on, it's way more terrifying because you're like, what the fuck is going on? Somebody's I don't in think a cage, he's like getting fucking dunked underwater over and over while they're in a kiddie pool. stand around and laugh. <laughs> yeah, they're in a kiddie pool that's filled up with water and there's bars on top of it and they're blindfolded so they can't see what's going on and people are shoving them under and hosing them off. And I mean, that's not even waterboarding. That's just drowning. They're just drowning somebody, you know? Right. And so... I don't know. It's a real trip. Like I even told him so many times, like if you didn't do stuff like that, the decorations of his haunt, the way he set it up, it's just so scary. If it's there's scary no enough. one, that's it. You don't even need an actor, honestly. If people just walk through there, it's already so creepy and so scary. Like I'm telling you, I was there at six in the morning setting something up and I was already just by myself and totally creeped out. I was like, Are you, do you feel almost like you have sort of a sense of PTSD from just being there and witnessing that like day after day for a while? Because when I first brought up McKamey Manor, your facial <laughs> expression and your tone of voice immediately changed. I was like, oh, he's fucking scarred. <laughs> I'm, much, I'm much better now. But I will say that <laughs> for months after I filmed there, for many, many months, I had so many nightmares oh, wow. and it wasn't even like nightmares about things that didn't happen. It was nightmares about like exactly what happened mm -hmm. and what it felt like, what it smelled like. And it was really, really fucked up. It was really fucked up. And I mean, like I definitely, I didn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. I stopped going back when I got the bit of footage that I needed because I wanted some kind of understanding more about why would someone that went through this go back and to work there 
Like I just, I was having right. such a hard time of like, I don't want to do voiceover narration and guess why? I want to, it has to come out naturally. I, something has to happen here. Because when I would interview people, they'd go, I don't know, I just want to try. I'm like, okay, fine. That one woman, April says, I, who was just out of her mind that she had to get out of there. That one day they wrapped her head right. in the cellophane and she's, so she said, I can't, I'd love to, if you give me a chance to come back as an actor. Right? And he was like, oh, well, and I said, well, why would you want to come back? And she says, because I want to hurt people. And she stopped and everyone giggled. She says, I want to do to other people what happened to me. I remember that. That was chilling. She was just like, well, I want to hurt people. <laughs> Basically. Dude. Well, it really, it's, that was like this moment where it's like, wow, you, you can hear about the cycle of abuse. You can hear about many examples, read about a lot of examples. That was that, and it just happened. Like she had, obviously they hurt her, and now she wants to do it to someone else. She wants to do that to someone else so that she doesn't feel like a victim anymore powerless yeah so she wants to victimize someone else which is a different type of a thing and it's it's even worse but it's honestly like i can't blame her for having that reaction because what do frat houses do and frats and sororities they, it's not eight hours it's what a couple a year one mm -hmm. year of someone treating you like garbage and then in return if you can put up with one year of someone treating you, beating you, doing terrible things to you, you get to then treat other people that way for three more years. And that just happens at all of our finer yeah. institutions. That just happens at prestigious institutions. And every year, there's always the, the hazing that went wrong. Someone... Someone was raped, someone died, someone's brain dead. It's not like it's happened once or twice. Yeah. It's happened so many times. And people are always like, oh, these extreme haunts are so fucked up. I'm like, okay, I totally agree. There's definitely some of totally crossed the line. But nobody's dead. And not that we should just wait till someone dies, but I'm just <laughs> saying, no one's dead. No one's been right. killed in an extreme haunt before. Nobody has, I mean, just fill in the blank of like the behavior that you hear about from these frat guys and sororities that you hear about yeah. all the time on the news. And then we've seen news footage of, of people that are like that, that monster Brock, uh, complete monsters. And it's this kind of, they call it affluenza. They're, they're giving it all kinds of fancy names for someone who's rich and wants to abuse people in their frat or in their sorority, you know, so. Don't even get me started on rich people who want to abuse people. You and I just, I just want to like have like a ton of conversations with you because yes. <laughs> Speaking of like wanting to have a ton of conversations, I think we probably are going to be out of Zoom time. Like, no problem. Quickly here, um, Cam. I I'm sorry. I really like took that shit over. Do you want to ask John's anything to like wrap it up? Um, no. I mean, we actually touched on a lot of stuff that I was jotting down while I was watching. And actually, I mean, I think now that I've been listening, I just. One of the most chilling things, I think, listening to you as a filmmaker talk about capturing that moment where you like saw somebody transfer from the victim to like just I, like that gave my my hands are sweating. It gave me chills. Like I just can't. That that's such a. I mean, it's not powerful in a positive light, but it is because it's just like this is something we all talk about it's so hard to comprehend. And then to see that, I just like, I'm still like in awe kind of, because that's like document. I mean, that's, that's just really cool. So thanks for sharing that because that really like resonated with me. And um, I still, I'm like still secretly like conspiracy, like he's got to be selling it to like, dark <laughs> web. like I'm totally. <laughs> I don't, he's not that savvy. Okay. Right. Ladies. I Ladies, he's not that savvy. He's right. not this tech whiz. I he he's kept a fucking asking wedding me questions. Singer. 
He's a wedding singer. Dude, he's a wedding singer who fucking, look, I had to help him with his, like, his video camera at one point he was filming, it was all white. And I was like, oh, dude. He's like, I got a new camera. The other one, he got, he broke the camera because it there was too much water in it. and I was like so afraid to film because I'm renting cameras. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna, Stop and I saw what he was doing. Splashing. Yes, I, I was like, oh my God, what is gonna happen? I mean, other more disgusting things happened to me, but the cameras were okay. But he, um, I was like, dude, you gotta turn on the light. He's like, how do I do, how do I do that? So I would show him a couple of things. So he was like, how do I get this uh, footage on the computer right? It's a new camera. And I was like, okay, so I would just show him, because I, Right. Not that footage in the movie. I want to make sure. Right. If not, I cannot believe at all for even half a second he would know how to get this on the dark web or that he knows about the dark web. Any of it. I really don't believe. I, I'm sure he knows about it. I just don't. Right. It's, it's like, try to explain to your parents how to use Roku. Okay. Do that and then tell me if they're going to be transferring shit to the dark web. That's who we're talking about. Okay. That's what I've done. This is like, not like. It's not like his day job was like some tech whiz. Like yeah. that's not what he's doing. He's he's editing on I, like iMovie. You know, it's not. Right. It's not a. <laughs> Where can I find your movie? 